of calm and peace, and I hope that as we worship together this morning, you can also rest and relax and rejuvenate um, in this kind of weekly reset that we have uh, to reconnect with God. So let us stand and worship together. One day when heaven was filled with his praises, one day when sin was as dark as could be, Jesus came forth to be born of a virgin, dwelt among men, my example is he. The word became flesh and the light shined among us, his glory revealed. Living he loved me, dying he saved me, buried he carried my sins far away. Rising he justified, freely forever. One day he's coming, a glorious day, a glorious day. Worship today 
as we turn our hearts to the Lord and sing, How Great is Our God. The splendor of the King Clothed in majesty Let all the earth rejoice All the earth rejoice He wraps himself in light And darkness cries at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great. day to be in God's house. Amen. Amen. I don't know who else wasn't expecting the snow on their cars this morning, but uh, that threw me for a little bit of a loop. <laughs> so I am just so excited to say welcome this morning, and thank you all for, for joining us here to worship at The Current, here in the sanctuary and those who are joining us online at home. We are blessed to be able to spend this time together. Will you pray with me? Good morning, God. As we gather together today, near and far, in physical and in virtual space, we know we are welcomed into your presence by your gracious hospitality. Grant that we will lay aside our cares and anxieties to concentrate our thoughts on you alone. 
Open us to your teaching and guidance for living. Grant that they will, we will be strengthened to walk with you and to follow wherever you lead us. And it's through Jesus Christ, your Son, and our Savior, we pray. Amen. Well, I want to take a moment to uh, invite you all to say welcome to one another, greet your neighbors, and maybe take a moment to meet somebody on the other side of the room today. Oh, hello everybody. I'm just taking some notes before my big head coaching interview opportunity with Colts owner Jim Mersey. Wish me luck. And while I'm doing that, it's time to get to announcements here at The Current. Apparently juggling is not my hidden talent. But if you do have a talent you'd like to share with St. Mark's Congregation, please feel free to sign up for St. Mark's annual 2023 talent show this Sunday, February 5th at 2 p.m. here in the sanctuary. For all talented people at St. Mark's, this is your chance to show your talents to everyone. So if you'd like to participate and showcase your hidden or special talents, please contact Eric DeForest at edeforest at stmarkscarmel.org no later than January 29th. Ta-da! I know we just entered 2023, but can you believe how fast time flies? Soon it's going to be hot summer weather where people are going to be hanging out on beaches and more importantly, kids are going to be out of school. So make sure you say the date for 2023 summer camps. It's already that time to begin planning for those summer camps. So don't forget to mark your calendar now to include Vacation Bible Camp, Sacred Drama and Puppet Camps, and Club 56 Mission Camp. These are the most exciting and enriching times of the summer. Your kids will not want to miss out. Volunteers are needed as well, and you can pick the days and times you're available to serve. So look for signups for all the camps set to roll out and begin this March. If you look away to serve our community, consider helping out Carmel Middle School Pantry Packs. This month, we're helping to provide food for Carmel Middle School students who may otherwise go hungry on the weekends. The CMS Pantry Packs are organized by the PTO and are distributed weekly throughout the school year. You can help by dropping off the requested items, see ways to serve, or visit stmarkscarmel.org slash missions to see the items needed. Once you have those items, feel free to place them in the donation bins just inside door number two. I think I want to give up on the struggling thing. I may try singing instead. While I'm doing that, I would like to take a moment to welcome all new guests to St. Mark's. We hope you're enjoying the service and can't wait to get to know you immediately following the service. Also, if you're with us live or watching the stream online, please mark your attendance by going to stmarkscarmel.org slash attend. Or if you're worshiping with us live in person, you can also fill out the QR code in the back of your bulletin and register your attendance that way, or fill out the blue book found in your pew. And now, let's get back to worshiping at the current. Yeah. Well, I've got to tell you, juggling is not my thing either. Uh, <laughs> so I am really looking forward to, though, seeing what the talents are that we have hidden amongst all of our congregation. I have I've been told of a few, and I'm looking forward to it. 
Uh, I also want to give an extra little plug for the summer camp opportunities this summer. We have some great things that are going on here at St. Mark's, but we also have an opportunity this year for our middle schoolers and high schoolers to join with other youth from um, the greater Indiana area at both Camp Adventure for the middle schoolers and Camp um, Epworth Forest for that thing for the high schoolers. Uh, I, I know I've had the conversation with even many sitting in this room right now about the huge impact that summer camp for me, Epworth Forest, had on my faith development as a, as a kid. And those opportunities are just so exciting. I'm glad that we're, we're able to do that this year. So look out for that information too. So we're going to enter into our, our time of prayer and contemplation and, and mediation for today. And as is the custom, I'd like to invite, encourage you all to have a silent and, and personal conversation with God during this time. You know, lift the, the joys and concerns that are on your hearts while you listen to uh, some special music from our worship team. But don't just stop there. Listen to for what God might be saying in response to you today. What is it that you might be being called to do here in our congregation or in our community or even around the world? Um, along with the registration uh, QR codes on the back of your bulletin, there are um, codes there for giving to our general offering and to our missions activities here at St. Mark's. So please take a look at those as well. And of course, you're always welcome to drop your, your tithes and offerings at the back of the sanctuary in the basket on your way out today. Um, during this time, we ask for God to add God's blessings to all of the various ways that we all give here at St. Mark's and in our community. Let's enter into this time of prayer with open hearts and open minds.
Will you pray with me? God of light and life, God of hope and purpose and healing, we give thanks for the signs that your spirit is at work even yet in our world. Signs that the coming of your kingdom is not as far off as it sometimes feels. We give thanks for those people whose presence lights up our lives because of their gentleness, their joy, their compassion, their simple goodness. For those who have dedicated their lives to the work of healing and reconciliation, those brave enough to speak truth to power, sometimes at a great risk even to themselves. For those who walk with others through the valley of death's shadow, those who make life fuller and more joyful by sharing the creative gifts that came from you. But we would be hard pressed, God, to say that your kingdom is any closer now than it was when Jesus proclaimed it by the lakeside, in the synagogue, in the town squares of Capernaum. Too many are sitting in the darkness still. Death cease, still casts a long shadow, and it holds many in its thrall. And so we pray, as Jesus said we should, for the time to come when your name is honored and your will done here on earth as perfectly as we imagine it to be done in heaven. And in the meantime, we ask your blessings on those who, like John, have been wrongfully arrested or even killed for being true to what they believe. Or those who, like Jesus, have had to move from one place to another in order to feel safe. Or those who, like the crowds who clamored for his touch, are sick and desperate for healing of body and mind and soul. God, God whose light broke into the world's darkness once a long time ago in a man named Jesus, may that same light shine on us and in us and through us for the world's healing and for our own and all to the glory of your name. Amen. Your mission, Jim, should you choose to accept it. Now, how many times have you heard that introduction to a mission impossible assignment? Earlier this week, I actually saw the full five-minute official trailer for the new Mission Impossible film that is slated to come out this summer. It is the seventh in the franchise that elevated Tom Cruise to the number three spot in Empire Magazine's The Top 100 Movie Stars of All Time. That was shortly after the list came out, after the original 1996 release of the first Mission Impossible. And now, whether it was Jim Phelps or Dan Briggs in the old TV show or Cruise's Ethan Hunt up on that big screen, there have been a number of times where the Mission Impossible star was just on the verge of retirement, but was called out on just one more urgent and seemingly impossible mission. I guess that's why it's called Mission Impossible, right? <laughs> but it's not just Mission Impossible that gives us the twists and turns that come with a retired or an almost retired or... I've moved from being a spy, spy, that have been called out on one last urgent mission that ends up being the most challenging or death-defying of his or her career. Along with Phelps, Briggs, and Hunt, Hollywood has given us a number of them. A retired James Bond in Daniel Craig in No Time to Die, the 25th, 25th, installment of that franchise from the fall of 2021. We have Liam Neeson in Taken, or Bruce Willis in last year's Fortress, Sniper's Eye. Or what about that incredible combination 
of Willis, Morgan Freeman, John Malkovich, and the iconic Ernest Borgnine in 2010's Red. I guess the subsequent sequel too, but it wasn't quite as good. The common theme from all of these action-packed flicks seems to be that it is in our times of complacency, times when we are most content with ordinary life, times when we certainly aren't out looking for risk or challenges to our status quo, that we are most often stirred into action. Enter the two sets of brothers that we find in today's scripture. Now, leading up to today's passage was Jesus' baptism by John in the Jordan, after which Matthew recounts Jesus' temptation in the wilderness. But today's scripture picks up and begins with the 12th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew, uh, 12th verse of the fourth chapter of the Gospel of Matthew. Now, when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum by the sea, in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali, on the road by the sea across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And for those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. Now from that time, Jesus began to proclaim, repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting nets into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately, they left their nets and followed him. As he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in the boat with their father, Zebedee, mending their nets, and he called them. Immediately, they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. So first, we find Jesus encountering Simon and his brother Andrew, just a couple of fishermen. Now, maybe they were working in the family business, but we know that James and John, the sons of Zebedee, were working with their dad, who was a fisherman. Jesus found James and John in their boat, mending their nets that they needed to cast to bring in the hall that supported the family business. All four of these guys were living a pretty ordinary life for that time, doing good, honest work to make a living. They may well have managed to achieve all that they had aspired to at that point in their lives. Uh, there was a little excitement going on throughout the land. I mean, there'd been talk about John the Baptist dressing in camel's hair and eating locusts. <sighs> Maybe the fishermen had even known or encountered John as he made his way through the countryside, baptizing people. But if they heard about or, or even knew him, it was from a distance. He hadn't impacted their lives. I mean, they were out fishing going along and just doing their thing, right? John had been arrested, and the hubbub about him was starting to die down a little bit. But now, now there was this new guy, Jesus, who was picking up where John the Baptist left off. And Jesus, he was changing everything. When Jesus encounters the fishermen who would become disciples, he challenges them to follow him. Now, he certainly didn't mince words, telling them to come on, come on, follow me. You won't just be catching fish anymore. You'll be fishing for people. So for Simon and, and Andrew and James and John, following Jesus meant sacrificing economic security and social standing. 
It meant entering into a wholly unknown future, entirely at the mercy of, well, at the mercy of God. They didn't know exactly what was ahead of them, but Jesus' call must have been urgent enough to make them leave their homes, their jobs, give up their good, solid, ordinary lives to follow him right then and there, immediately, completely, and unequivocally. Moving, perhaps, from a life of complacency to a life with this sense of of urgency of spreading the news. Now for Candy Chang, the creator of the Before I Die campaign, it was the sudden death of a dear friend of hers that woke her up from living a life of complacency to living one that had a sense of urgency. Thoughts of death and grief brought clarity to what was meaningful in her life. With an abandoned house just across the street from her New Orleans home, Chang wondered how she could use this abandoned property as a public space that would connect people, making neglected space into constructive space, a place of loneliness into a reminder that we are not alone. Chang turned the house into a chalkboard and wrote the sentence, before I die, I want to blank lines. And those blank spaces were invitations for passers-by to complete the sentence with their own words. Now, the words ranged from, from silly to profound, from sadness and regret to hope and to joy, such as, before I die, I want to find peace. I want to stop being afraid. I want to make a difference. Before I die, I want to live in a world without oppression. See the world and all of its people through the eyes of God. Before I die, I want to find God. Now, on its own, a chalkboard is about as ordinary as you can get. But in this instance, it was turned into an extraordinary source of inspiration. Similarly, the work of Peter and Andrew and James and John as fishermen couldn't have been more ordinary for their time and their station in life. Yet Jesus still inspired and awakened these new disciples to a new sense of meaning and life-changing purpose that compelled them to drop what they were doing and to follow him. This deep sense of urgency overrode any need for full understanding of what was at stake, or even a complete grasp of of who they were following. It was a monumental act of faith. They were shaken into action, and they followed. The moment when the soon-to-be disciples said yes, dropped everything and followed Jesus, was just the beginning of their stories. In calling the the Galilean fishermen to discipleship, Jesus does not just ask them to add one more task to their busy lives. He calls them into a whole new way of being. When, When Simon and Andrew leave their nets, they leave a way of life. And this is even clearer with James and John, who leave not only their nets, but they also leave their father. Think for for just a moment, though, what their choice to follow brings to them. They find themselves being astounded at Jesus' teaching. They witness the rebuke of unclean spirits, the healing of sick people, the cleansing of lepers. They lose track of Jesus, and they must search for him again. Ahead of them, there was also much to learn, an awful lot of stumbling, and a whole lot of misunderstanding. And I'm quite sure there was no small amount of backsliding. 
And you know, the, the same is true for us today. Just like these brothers, we have much to learn on our journeys of faith. And Jesus doesn't say, follow me and I will make sure that nothing bad happens to you, no matter how badly we might wish for that to be the message. To be clear, to follow Jesus is to follow the Lord who is our light and salvation. To follow Jesus is to choose well a stronghold for life. But to follow Jesus is not to receive absolute security. To follow Jesus is to receive that odd yet inspiring promise, I will make you fish for people. So what does it mean to receive this particular promise? Now, at the, at the heart of the assurance that Jesus will turn these catchers of fish into catchers of people is a challenge to reach out to others in the name of Christ. Jesus showed them, will show us, the path to reconciliation with our God, but he will also give us a purpose along the way. If we entrust ourselves to Jesus, Jesus entrusts us with the holy work of building the sacred community that gathers in his name, giving us the tools to share this good news with all people. And now how we do this holy work certainly does matter. I think it could serve us all well to remember that the fishers in ancient Palestine didn't fish with hooks that puncture and injure, but with nets that surround and gather, gently and securely. You know, I, I once saw a young man fall out of a tree and, and fracture several bones. Those of us who were on the ground witnessing this fall would have done just about anything to have a net to, to catch him with before he hit the cement. In our world, people are falling. People are lonely, depressed, hungry, desperate. People are nursing injuries incurred by bad experiences of organized religion. People need forgiveness and repentance. People are falling, and Jesus promises to equip us to catch them. You see, the net that he provides us with is, is woven with the good news of God, a strong rope made of love and forgiveness and hope and justice. The net's not a trap. The net's not a trick. The net is a complete gift of God's grace and healing, given to a creation that is given to spills. A creation that has broken a million bones against the hard cement of sin. But when men and women are, are caught by that net, they are given something beyond security. They're given a new life. Now maybe we've not yet been able to say a, a full yes to Jesus. And if we have, there is no doubt that we have all stumbled. And I'm pretty sure I can promise you we'll stumble again. We've all had misunderstandings. And chances are that we've all had a time of, of backsliding or, or a time or two, or two where we end up just being complacent. But you know what? That's okay. It's okay because becoming a faithful Christian disciple takes both a moment and an entire lifetime. The good news today is that God loved us so much that God became human and came to earth to model love and life among us. And you and I 
All of us together, we are called to recreate, to replicate that love wherever it is that we go. The call is bold and clear. Shaking would-be and and soon-to-be followers out of their complacency. Shaking us into action. Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. Will you pray with me? If Jesus were alive today, God, which he is, of course, but you know what we mean, would he want us to follow him on Snapchat or or Twitter or Instagram? Would he send out invitations by by text? Would he he set up a a virtual community of disciples online? Or, Or would he still find that time to come right up alongside us in a warm, living, breathing human body, to look at us straight in the eye and say in a voice that is quiet but utterly compelling, leave all of that for now. Come and follow me. However your call may come to us, God, may we respond as those fishermen did recklessly and wholeheartedly and without a moment's hesitation because you know there will be plenty of hesitations later. For now, we have the perception to recognize your voice and the courage to follow where you lead. And it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. And I'd like to invite you all once again to stand as you are led and able and, and join us in. I think this is a new song for the congregation, right? I've done it a few times. Okay. So familiar to some, but sums up what we're talking about here. Join us as we sing, I Will Follow. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow All your ways are good All your ways are sure I will trust in you alone Higher than my sight High above my life I will trust in you Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. Where you move, I'll move. I will follow you. Where you love, I'll love. How you serve, I'll serve. If this life I lose, I will follow you. to my life I will live in you alone you're the one I see no one I shall find I will need in you alone in you alone where you go I'll go where you stay I'll stay where you serve I'll serve I will follow you If this life I lose, I will follow you. Yeah, I will follow you. Yeah. In you there's life everlasting. In you there's freedom for my soul. In you are joy unending. I will follow where 
our time and our space together today. Let's remember Jesus' invitation on the shore of the Sea of Galilee two millennia ago. The same invitation he gives to each of us today. And let us respond. Into the world we will follow. Into the questions of life and journeys of hope we will follow into the traditions of our community's past and our unknown future, we will follow. And into the heart of our community, we will follow. Into life, into all of life, we will follow you. And let's go change the world. Amen. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow you. Who you love, I'll love. How you serve, I'll serve. 